I like maps where there's a lot going on. You know, you don't necessarily understand everything you're looking at, but it's there, it was intentional, it had some kind of meaning, and it just becomes your project to figure it out. Hi, I'm Jason Weiss. I'm the chief curator here at the Historic New Orleans Collection, and I'm the curator of the exhibition Cartographic Legacies, Historical Maps at the Williams Research Center. You know, I've been working with maps for the entirety of my career here at the collection, and I love maps. They are fascinating objects. They're beautiful. Um, we have an extensive collection of maps going back to the 16th century, actually. They are information dense. They're often artistically fantastic. Um, they're so full of detail that you can just spend a good bit of time just delving into them and noticing things, you know, on a 20th viewing that you didn't notice on the 10th viewing. There's a lot going on in maps, and they say a lot about how people felt about the world, how they saw not only the physical geography of the planet, but the different people, the wildlife, the difficulty of getting from one place to the next. Decoding maps is a, a fun thing to do. The very first object to be accessioned into our museum collection, accession number 0.01. The uh, Map of America by Judokas Hondius was produced in Amsterdam around 1606 for uh, Mercator's uh, Atlas uh, Cive Geographica. It's a very fun map to look at because it's one of those old maps that has sea monsters and just little vignettes of people doing things. So there's just a lot of fun stuff going on but also strange stuff that you don't think of necessarily for 1606. If you look in the upper um, left corner, you see what is unmistakably a Japanese ship sailing in the Northern Pacific. And you're like, how, how did they even know about Japan or what a Japanese ship looked like? Because you don't think of that. But of course, the, the Dutch East India Company was already established by then and, and headquartered in Amsterdam. So you don't necessarily think of, oh yeah, there was worldwide trade happening even back then. So it's kind of fun to see it and be reminded of that in a map like this. A lot of the artistic embellishment in this map has to do with native people. This inset scene of indigenous women of Brazil preparing some kind of uh, intoxicating beverage for the men of their tribe. You can see a woman spitting the uh, chewed up root of whatever it is into a pot, which they then cook and um, offer to the men as this kind of uh, euphoric beverage. And the, all of this is explained in a Latin caption there. You, you often see references to Native Americans, indigenous people of the Americas in early European maps of the, especially the 17th and eight, early 18th centuries. And when you see an indigenous person depicted in a map of that era, they don't typically look really like an indigenous person. They look like a European dressed as an indigenous person. And that's because most European map makers never came anywhere near the Americas. They were working from secondhand reports and they were artists. They were making good faith efforts to accurately depict the information that they were receiving at secondhand, but they were working at a significant disadvantage. So it's not really, you know, accurate in terms of, of all of the ethnographic details. But those details really added to the marketability of maps because Europeans, you know, in 1606, we're just a little more than a hundred years out from that first major contact between Europe and the Americas. And Europe's mind was still blown a hundred years later. They were still fascinated. They could not get enough information about the Americas. Everything, you know, about the Americas that they could get their hands on, they wanted. 
So you see an enormous number of maps that have these, you know, exotic details because that was what people were fascinated by.